The best paper that can answer this question is titled, Bayesian Phylogenetic Analysis of Semitic Languages Identifies an Early Bronze Age Origin of Semitic in the Near East, and it reads, The evolution of languages provides a unique opportunity to study human population history. The origin of Semitic and the nature of dispersals by Semitic speaking populations are of great importance to our understanding of the ancient history of the Middle East and the Horn of Africa. Semitic populations are associated with the oldest written languages and urban civilizations in the region, which gave rise to some of the world's first major religious and literary traditions. In this study, we employ Bayesian computational phylogenetic techniques recently developed in evolutionary biology to analyze Semitic lexical data by modeling language evolution and explicitly testing alternative hypothesis of Semitic history. We implement a related linguistic clock to date language divergences and use epigraphic evidence for the sampling dates of extinct Semitic languages to calibrate the rate of language evolution. Our statistical tests of alternative Semitic histories support an initial divergence of Akkadian from ancestral Semitic over competing hypothesis, e.g. an African origin of Semitic. We estimate an early Bronze Age origin for Semitic approximately 5,750 years ago in the Levant and further propose that contemporary Ethiosemitic languages of Africa reflect a single introduction of early Ethiosemitic from Southern Arabia approximately 2,800 years ago. Semitic languages comprise one of the oldest studied language families in the world. Semitic is of particular interest due to its association with the earliest civilizations in Mesopotamia, the Levant, and the Horn of Africa which gave rise to several of the world's first major religious traditions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and literary works, e.g. the Akkadian poem, the Epic of Gilgamesh. The importance of Semitic dates back at least 4,350 years before present to ancient Sumer in Mesopotamia, where the Akkadian language replaced Sumerian. From this time forward, archaeological evidence for Semitic among the Hebrews and Phoenicians in the Levant and the Oxmites in the Horn of Africa suggest that Semitic speaking populations and their languages underwent a complex history of geographical expansion, migration, and diffusion tied to the emergence of the earliest urban civilizations in these regions. The field of Semitic linguists have generally coalesced around a model that places the ancient Mesopotamian language Akkadian as the most basal lineage of Semitic. The standard model divides Semitic into East Semitic, composed of the extinct Akkadian and Ebalite languages, and West Semitic, consisting of all remaining Semitic languages that are distributed from the Levant to the Horn of Africa. West Semitic is in turn divided into South, consisting of Ethiosemitic, Epigraphic South Arabian, and Modern South Arabian and Central Linguistic groups but the genealogical relationships of the languages within these two groups are poorly defined. In this study, we analyze lexical data from 25 Semitic languages distributed throughout the Middle East and the Horn of Africa using a Bajan phylogenetic method to simultaneously infer genealogical relationships and estimate divergent states of the Semitic languages investigated here. Figure 1 map of Semitic languages and inferred dispersals. The location of all languages sampled in this study, both extinct and extant, are depicted on the map. The map also presents the dispersal of Semitic languages inferred from our study and origin of Afroasiatic along the African coast of the Red Sea, supported by comparative analysis, is indicated in red, although other African origins of Afroasiatic have been proposed, e.g. Southwest Ethiopia, the assumed location of the divergence of ancestral Semitic from Afroasiatic between the African coast of the Red Sea and the Near East is indicated in italics. 
Semitic dispersals are depicted by arrows colored according to the estimated time of divergence. See colored time scale at top of figure. And important nodes from the phylogeny are placed on the arrows to indicate where and when these divergences occurred. Semitic language divergence dates. In addition to delineating the relationship between different Semitic languages, our phylogenetic analysis provides dates for the divergences of investigated languages. The main estimates of all language divergence times with associated 95% HPDs are depicted in years on the phylogeny in figure 2. Our phylogeny indicates the most basal divergence within Semitic occurred at 5750 YBP, HPD 4400 through 7400 YBP, suggesting an origin of Semitic during the Early Bronze Age. This result implies that a hypothetical ancestral language was extinct during this period and gave rise to all of the Semitic languages investigated in this study. The deepest four branches of the phylogeny indicate the divergence of East root, West node A, South node E, and Central node B, Semitic. These divergences are nearly coincident with largely overlapping HPDs 3300 through 7400 YPP, suggesting that Semitic underwent a period of rapid diversification upon its origin. Semitic Origins Our analysis of the Semitic language family produced a dated phylogeny that estimates the origin of Semitic at approximately 4,400 through 7,400 YPP. The phylogeny suggests East Semitic, represented by Akkadian in the study, corresponds to the deepest branch. And our log BF tests indicate that Akkadian is the appropriate root for the Semitic languages analyzed here. These results indicate that the ancestor of all Semitic languages in our dataset was being spoken in the Near East no earlier than approximately 7,400 YBP after having diverged from Afro-Asiatic in Africa. Our estimate for the origin of Semitic 4,400 through 7,400 YBP predates the first Akkadian inscription in the archaeological record of northern Mesopotamia by approximately 100 through 3,000 years. The city-states of Sumer were established and flourishing in Mesopotamia with their own indigenous languages unrelated to Semitic by approximately 5,400 YBP. So it is unlikely that Akkadian was spoken in Sumer for the entirety of the possibly 3,000 year interval between the origin of Semitic and Akkadian's initial appearance in the archaeological record. Furthermore, Ebalite, the closest relative of Akkadian and the only other member of East Semitic, was spoken in the Levant, which is also where some of the oldest West Semitic languages were spoken, Ugaritic, Aramaic, and Ancient Hebrew. The presence of ancient members of the two oldest Semitic groups East and West Semitic in the same region of the Levant, combined with a possible long interval 100 through 3000 years between the origin of Semitic and the appearance of Akkadian in Sumer, suggests a Semitic origin in the Northeast Levant and a later movement of Akkadian eastward into Mesopotamia and Sumer. Semitic Early Dispersals Our Semitic language phylogeny indicates that the initial divergence of ancestral Semitic into East and West Semitic was nearly coincident with the divergence of West Semitic into Central and South Semitic around 5,300 YBP. The short interval between the two divergences and their overlapping HPDs suggests that both divergences may have occurred in the Northeast Levant. The distribution of ancient and modern Central and South Semitic languages is consistent with Central Semitic spreading westward throughout the Levant and South Semitic spreading southward from the Levant eventually reaching Southern Arabia. Central Semitic branch is characterized first by divergence into Arabic and the Levantine languages Aramaic, Hebrew, and Ugaritic at least 3650 YBP and possibly shortly after 
East and West Semitic diverged. The Levantine languages subsequently diverged into separate lineages by approximately 4050 YBP, but possibly as early as approximately 4400 YBP. The expansion of the Levantine languages of Central Semitic approximately 3650 through 4400 YBP was probably part of the migration process that was definitive of the transition from the early to the Middle Bronze Age in the Levant. Within South Semitic, the early emergence of a South Arabian lineage between approximately 3300 and 6250 YBP may reflect an early Bronze Age expansion of Semitic from the Levant southward to the Arabian Desert. The recurrent spread of early Semitic peoples and their languages into the steep and desert lands of the Arabian Peninsula, combined with biblical testimony of early Hebrew subsistence, led us to propose that the earliest West Semitic society may have had a largely pastoralist economy, particularly adapted to such conditions. Conclusion We used Bayesian phylogenetic methods to elucidate the relationships in divergent states of Semitic languages, which we then related to epigraphic and archaeological records to produce a comprehensive hypothesis of Semitic origins and dispersals. After the divergence of ancestral Semitic from Afro-Asiatic in Africa, we estimate that Semitic had an early Bronze Age origin, approximately 5,750 YBP in the Levant, followed by an expansion of Akkadian into Mesopotamia. Proto-Semites have their origins in the Levant in 4000 BC. They dispersed from the Levant into Arabia and Mesopotamia in 3750 BC. With that being said, what is the Y-DNA chromosomal haplogroup of Proto-Semites? And just a reminder, we estimate that Semitic had an early Bronze Age origin, 5750 YBP, in the Levant, followed by the expansion of Akkadian into Mesopotamia. According to the website EUpedia, titled Haplogroup E1B1B, it reads, E-M34 is the main Middle Eastern variety of E1B1B and is thought to have arrived with the Proto-Semitic people in the Late Copper to Early Bronze Age. And according to Peter Solomon Kovacs, historian and archaeologist at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, he says, In this group, many of us conclude that haplogroup E is one of the major founding haplogroups of the Semitic people, and that haplogroup E people were the ones who brought Proto-Semitic language out of the Afro-Asiatic homeland in Northeast Africa into the Levant and Mesopotamia. And according to Haplogroup F-M89 Familypedia, it reads, However, certain subclades of Haplogroup E, which commonly occur among all modern populations of Africa, are also closely associated with the distribution of Afro-Asiatic languages, both within Africa and in Southwest Asia, which many scholars have taken to support the hypothesis of a Northeast African origin of Afro-Asiatic languages and subsequent colonization of Southwest Asia by haplogroup E3b bearing Proto-Semites. So, Proto-Semitic populations carried haplogroup E. Proto-Semites, their origins are in the Levant in 4000 BC, and Proto-Semites dispersed from the Levant in 3750 BC. Let's actually visualize this migration of Proto-Semites from the Levant into Mesopotamia and Arabia and Africa. Since all of the best evidence points to the homeland of Proto-Semites, in the Levant.
So as you could see from that visual representation, the homeland of Semites, Proto-Semites, is in the Levant. And from the Levant, early Semitic populations like Akkadians will expand from the Levant in 3750 BC into Mesopotamia. With that being said, what is the Y DNA chromosomal haplogroup of early Semites like Akkadians? And again, just to reiterate, according to the Bayesian phylogenetic analysis of Semitic languages, identifies an early Bronze Age origin of Semitic in the Near East, we estimate that Semitic had an early Bronze Age origin, approximately 5,750 YBP in the Levant, followed by an expansion of Akkadian into Mesopotamia. Now, according to the paper titled how Eurasia was born, it reads, the most plausible candidates for Semitic remigration to the Fertile Crescent with TMRCAs fitting the arrival of the Akkadians and other early Semitic peoples are certain subclades of both E-V22 and E-V12 with relatively early TMRCAs present in the Middle East could be candidates for such remigration, such as E FGC14382, TMRCA is 2200 BCE, and E V3262, TMRCA is 2600 BCE. And according to the page titled Haplogroup J1 is definitely not Semitic in origin, it reads According to the theory, Afro-Asiatic languages spread to Asia via E1b haplogroup, not J1 haplogroup. It is historically known that a ruling elite class of Afro-Asiatic people, Akkadians, Assyrians, etc., also invaded the north of Mesopotamia and brought their Afro-Asiatic languages to the central and northern parts of Mesopotamia during the period of Akkadians and Babylonians. Elite dominance model of E1B1 might be supposed for Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. In this sense, it might be theorized that Sumerian was the main language of ancient Mesopotamians before Afro-Asiatic E1B overwhelmed Mesopotamia. Elite dominance model. Therefore, early Semitic populations like the Akkadians would have carried haplogroup E into Mesopotamia. The migration of Semites from the Levant into Mesopotamia actually fits perfectly with the spread of haplogroup E throughout the Middle East. Now